Friends of being kind of putting off a video about an anamorphic lens that was sent to me several months back because I really, really wanted to check it out thoroughly. It's from a company called Ulanzi, and you can get this on Amazon. This lens is about $59. Now, the only thing I have to compare it to, my only experience is with a Sandmark lens that I got about three months ago, anamorphic. I never entered the world of anamorphic shooting, which what that basically does is gives you about a third wider image than what you'll get um, with just a standard, say, 4K lens or, you know, I'm trying to say another. It's not 16.9. I can't even remember what the aspect is now, but it's much wider. It's about a third wider, and of course, I'll put that on the screen. I'm not a, a, a total expert in this thing, this whole concept of different uh, widths for high-definition video but I do like the look that you get with it. So this is the Ulanzi lens. This is what came. I'm not doing an unboxing or anything. I showed you the box. But so the lens, it comes with a lens cap on it and you take that off and you've got the lens. And as you can probably see there in the light, it is, the effect is that it, it has a sort of a, 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 is it concave or convex? Convex, I guess. It's like this thing, right? And so it spreads out the amount of video that you get. And I've done a video about the Sandmark one that I've got. Um, and, and, you know, so I didn't want this to be a, a um, comparison video, but it's almost going to have to turn out to be one. <laughs> and, 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 you know, because I didn't want it to be. The Sandmark one that I got was, gee, it retails maybe $159, $149. It's rough. It's almost three times as expensive as this one. So the question comes to mind here, the grand question is, which one do I go with? You know, is, is the Sandmark at 150 bucks or 160 bucks, you know, worth it if when I can get one for $59? Well, I'll tell you what I found out. So the first time I went out with this lens, this is the Ulanzi, uh, it, it came with this, uh, well, I'm trying, I'm trying to show it to you here if I can find it. Um, this is this is the clip that it came with, and so what you do, of course, is you um, you screw this onto the back of the phone, the iPhone. Now, I, I was testing it with an iPhone Seven because that's the reason I use my iPhone Seven um, is because I have Movie Pro on it. Movie Pro allows me to shoot this fantastic video at like 130 megs per second, which is great. Great to have that super high bit rate, particularly if you want to do a lot of color grading and everything. So I put this on, and I remember we went to Grandfather Mountain, I was with Rich Co. so Rich may be in some of the videos I'm going to show you here. And, and you know, I put it on kind of hastily, but I, I thought I put it on there very accurately. And um, the lens screws into this, right? And it goes over your, your uh, the phone, and you clamp it down on the back. So the video that I shot that day was disappointing. And, it, you know, some of it looked okay, some of it did not. Mostly what I noticed was that everything was nice and tight and in focus for the area that you think it would be. And all that extra third that you get out here to the sides looked fuzzy. It looked, uh, the, the definition didn't look good. And so I'm showing you some of that stuff on the screen now so you can see what I'm talking about. If you look to the left and right, you'll see that the video is not as sharp as it is in the center of the screen. And, you know, fantastic vistas there. And you'll see some of these videos, some, some bits look better than the other. Sometimes it looks a little sharper on one side uh, than it does on the other. The thing you're looking for that you want to, to in excellence for these things is for it to be nice and, and fairly sharp. The whole distance, the whole width of the, uh, otherwise, why do you why do you even want the other third, the, the extra third of a, a video? <laughs> so um, I went back after looking at it, I thought, well, you know, maybe I didn't do a good job screwing it on there. Maybe I, maybe I'm, maybe I'm messing up here and I, I just didn't set this stuff. So I was very excruciatingly careful to do this, to do this again and put it on the camera, mount the lens and, and, and make sure that it was positioned right. And of course you have to, uh, you, you have to have them where the, the curt, you know, on this one, you got your lens on top like that. And then you've got, uh, one and 1.33. That's the accurate pixel aspect, I guess. 1.33 times, yeah, a, th a third more, right? But so uh, you have to have either that, it has to be either that on top or that on top. It really doesn't matter. And so I was really careful about doing that. Still with this, I still found that it was a bit blurry. 
in, in the sides. Now, before you think that I'm talking about a you know, piece of trash here, I'm not. Here's what was the interesting thing I found out. So I thought, hmm, I'd like to try this, uh, this combination, this clip, and this on my Google Pixel. So I took my Google Pixel out, and I put this on the Google Pixel, and I'll be darned if this lens wasn't at least, I would say, 90% as good as the Sandmark, the expensive one. And I'll show you some of those images on the screen so you can see. Um, pretty darn clear over in the, in, the, in the sides, left and right. And that's using this clip. So with my Google Pixel 2, this actually, this combination worked just great. And uh, I say 90%, it might have been more like 95% as good as the Sandmark. So hey, here you're looking at a lens that's a third the cost or something like that. Um, you know, 40% the cost. And 95% as good as the Sandmark. Now that was for my Google Pixel using the clamp, the clamp, right? Now here was something interesting that I had to just give, a, give it a shot, right? Here's my iPhone 7. And uh, this is the Sandmark case that came with the iPhone 7. And, and I, I started thinking, huh, I wonder if the Ulanzi lens, this is the Sandmark, I wonder if the Ulanzi lens will screw onto this this hole here. So if you buy the expensive one, the one from Sandmark, you get this case. And, and you know what? It fit on there perfectly. The Ulanzi just screwed right on there. So I went out and I thought, well, I'll shoot some video now with the, uh, with the Ulanzi on the iPhone using the Sandmark case. And here, this is what was very eye-opening. All of a sudden, everything looked really good. I mean, it did. Uh, Almost everything I shot, you know, maybe just the slightest bit of distortion on the on the uh, outer fringes, but the the the, the uh, Ulanzi lens performed, I would say, seventy five percent better on the Sandmark case. So, in my estimation, Ulanzi should make a case like this, or go to the same company that makes this one for Sandmark. That is, if you're going to use your iPhone seven. Now, listen, folks, I have no idea. I don't have any scientific. All I have is visual proof. I don't have a scientific reason for why this thing does not work well with an iPhone 7. That's taking the case off, you know, putting it just naked on the iPhone 7. That's the way I did it. Um, this worked fine with a Pixel. Did not work well with my iPhone. That's the one, I, my primary, uh, if I'm going to shoot with a cell phone. But th it, this, this looks fine. Now, the other thing I did, I wanted to take it out at night because I knew what kind of video, I, you know, I'm sorry, I haven't done comparison video uh, showing the Sandmark, but I'll say the Ulanzi performs really well at night. I went out and went down Valdez. Again, I had it screwed to the Sandmark case on an iPhone 7, and I went and looked at classic cars and stuff. The colors looked great. The skies looked great. Uh, it, it, there was even a, almost like a little bit of that, you know, that Star Trek weird lens flare that to J.J. Abrams uses in the Star, Star Trek movies. <laughs> there was a bit of that blue type, uh, uh, you know, horizontal lines, and it didn't bother me at all. I kind of like it. Uh, and and I, I don't even think I've seen that much with the Sandmark, but it's kind of a cool effect, and it looked nice to me. Uh, so I enjoy using this at night. Uh, I'll, sh I'll show you, I'm going to show you a comparison to kind of end this. Um, I, I just stood out on my back porch, and I put the Sandmark on, and I put the Ulanzi on. Shot the Ulanzi first, and, and I and I here again, uh, off my back porch, same time of day, you know, three minutes apart. Had the Ulanzi on here, then I put the uh, Sandmark lens on here, um, and I could not tell maybe five percent difference. It looked it looked to me like maybe the Sandmark is slightly. Uh, from, from from the center all the way to the edge, maybe slightly better. Is it $90 better? Yeah, that's for you to decide. I'm putting this out here. I'm saying if you're wanting to dip into, uh, into anamorphic lens, using an anamorphic lens, the Ulanzi is not a bad choice. I think for an iPhone 7, maybe iPhone 8, I don't know. All I have is an iPhone 7. But for some reason... This does not work as well as something like that case that Sandmark made. And the folks at Ulanzi probably aren't going to like hearing that, but they've got a great little lens. And, and, and I do not know why what the structure of the lens on my Google Pixel 2 uh, is, what the difference between that and the iPhone 7 is. I can't get Movie Pro 
for the Google Pixel 2, or I just use this on the Google Pixel 2, but this works okay. It works really quite great on a Google Pixel, at least my, my test. Here I'm using a Pixel 2 from a year and a half ago. I'm using an um, iPhone 7 from, what, three and a half, two and a half, three years ago. And uh, it is a very good, very good lens. Uh, 59 bucks, I think it's worth that. One thing to be sure of, folks, and, and you got to understand, you know, it took me a while to figure out how these lenses really work and what their purpose really is. Uh, I think when I would, if to use an anamorphic lens, I think for establishing shots, uh, shots where you're just slow panning, keeping your, your camera level, not turning it this way or that way. If you do this or that, it totally wreaks havoc with the video. If that thing is turning this way in that plane, uh, you know, in my, you know, when I look in cinema and I see these uh, kind of wide shots, let's say it's, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. For instance, Mad Men. I, I've seen shots where, you know, from a distance, you're seeing two people talking, one's over here, one's over here. Maybe even uh, um, Mr. Robot and stuff like that. You'll have the wide shots. And they're always still shots. The anamorphic shots, most of the time, are, are they're, they're stationary. They're on a tripod. I think these lenses really excel when you put them on a tripod and you actually can hold it steady and, and you're just getting it like an opening lens. I, I would see this like an establishing shot for a movie. Say you're shooting a western or a cityscape or, or you're just setting the stage. Uh, or, or, you know, then again, maybe in nature, maybe you want to go out and do a, uh, uh, you know, go, go to a beautiful place. Like you can see the Grandfather Mountain stuff does look good. That is dramatic. That is what you want to use it for is broad landscapes like that. Um, so what I'm going to say is I think this positioned the right way, used the right way, is probably at least 90 to 95% as good as the Sandmark, which is much more expensive. I do think the Sandmark does have the edge with the optics. And that little case right there is worth it, especially if you're going to shoot with an iPhone. Now, I have no idea what how this thing would work with an iPhone 9 with those three or, or iPhone 11 with those three cameras on it. Uh, maybe we'll get there someday, but I guess you it, it would be positioned on one of those holes. But th th pretty cool, pretty good job, you Lanzi. I, I like it. Uh, it's very simple to use. You just, you know, again that that will work for your for your uh, Google Pixel. But I would highly recommend that they think about making a case similar to that one there that uh, that Sandmark made. Peace to all who watch. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you like. Click the bell. I know, I, you know most people don't come back to my channel for sub subscribers because I forget to tell them to click the bell. Ring that bell. <laughs> and if you have any questions about this, just let me know. Um, it, you know both both of those, these lenses now have been sent to me, so it's not like I've purchased these lenses. And so I'm I'm not beholden to either one of these people though. I just promised them I would do the, the review. So this is just this is just me being purely honest. This is a good dang little lens if you want to get into anamorphic cheap. Um, like I say, just understand the limitations of any anamorphic lens. I do think you'd be highly pleased if you use tripods, or if you stand very still, hold, you don't jitter this way or that way. These are not good walking camera lenses, honestly. I mean, unless you've got some sort of maybe a very good very good gimbal to put it on. But uh, man, you can't beat the uh, the broad the broad like say landscapes that you can get with it and the, the cool looks. So I, so I do like I like using anamorphic lenses. I need to get my butt out and do some hiking. It's been so busy with freelance work. I've not had a chance to do that lately. But uh, I'd love to get out this fall and show you some really nice landscapes using anamorphic lenses. Again, thanks for watching, folks, and let me know if you have any questions. And I'll put links to this on Amazon, so you can go there and purchase this as well.